last episode, Steve and his friends put up the frame for the boathouse. I also committed to quit my job and move down from Portland. The cable was up, it was all padded, and now it's time to put up the roof. So we're going to use the foam to pad down the sides um, on the like the ridge lines on the two edges. Um, maybe a foot is enough. We're going to have a lot of extra foam. So three foot, four foot. Those will do all our ends. Great job holding that. Thanks, man. <laughs> Keep up the stellar work. One step closer. All right, what do you think? It's good. Haul the poly up there, and then it'll be about time to go get the brake pads and rotors and do the brakes and go pick up that table saw. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Our roofing was to be a big roll of greenhouse style poly. We put it on a metal bar with two eye bolts in the end, hauled it up into a tree. We were planning on setting up a pulley system in order to pull and unroll it over the building. That's about good. What do you think? I think so too. We may not even need to hang it off of those two branches. I don't think so. I think I'm gonna go up with some rope and tie it back though. Yeah, that's what I was So thinking. it doesn't swing around. Yeah. I think that's fine. One of us can get up in the tree there. Uh huh. You can stand in the Ys and anchor in and just guide the plastic. Yeah. I'm afraid that we're gonna start pulling and it's just gonna like uncontrollably unwind. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's a chance. I think I'd feel a lot better somebody up there. What I'm wondering too is if the it's plastic. going to start unfolding as it gets With the poly firmly attached up in the tree and ready for us to unroll when we get back, we went to go get the saw. Throughout this project, we've been diligently looking for new tools in order to help us on our way. We ended up finding this great old cabinet saw on Craigslist, so we decided to go pick it up. I've always wanted a cabinet saw. But they're one of those things that's really, they're really, really expensive. I mean, new ones are thousands and thousands of dollars. And usually if you find them on Craigslist, they're either total dumps or, you know, people want $800 or $1,000 for it because they're worth it. And the guy was selling this one for 50 bucks, which to me makes no sense at all. Um, I mean, the electric motor itself is worth more than that. The blade in it is worth that, right? so great deal, but we're going to put it to use. We'll put it through its paces and psych to get it cleaned up and lubricated and get it working well, but everything seems to be in decent shape and these old machines like this, they're so big and heavy and simple that 
even if we're missing a part, we can probably get it made or make it ourselves, um, which is good. It ain't light, I'll tell you that. I said there's a little bit of a difference between the two, huh? Definitely a difference. You know, one. The, the $50 one and the what? <laughs> I don't know what it was new. I mean, at least 150 Versus... Yeah, this will be great. Once we get the new plug for it, get it tuned up. Well, we'll use this one for now. With the cabinet saw at home, it was time to unroll the poly and finish up this roof. Alright, we should be live. Alrighty. Can we just check the screen? Oh, that's a nice nose. <laughs> that's a weird view. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens. This works. I really, really, really hope this works. All right, that look good? I mean, I don't know. I think so. <laughs> let's see what happens. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, let well, we just pray. No wind. Feel that please, Mother Nature? No wind. Are you ready? Next hour. All right, here it goes. Oh, it's slow, slow, slow. Okay. She's dagging? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, should we try to get that pivot point higher? What pivot point over there? Yeah, where it's riding on the sling. Yeah, I think we gotta get that higher. Oh, that's not good. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to go get it. Fun that was not. Well, well done, nonetheless. Okay. Alright. Nice and slow. Did you stop it from rolling down? Alright, keep pulling.
Our roof unfurling disaster led to some extra work. We ended up spending the next couple of hours trying to untangle the plastic and pull it up and back over the cable. Well, didn't go as planned, as you can see. So we're gonna try to fix this, but things aren't looking good. We had to smooth it out in order to get both sides even and then tack it to the sides of the building. Though frustrating, things were going more or less well with the untangling of the plastic. Until, that is, the wind started blowing. The poly started catching onto the metal roof on the garage. Oh, come on. And we were really worried that it was going to start ripping it to shreds. You gotta get some ropes over it, man. Yeah. Now we gotta try to not have any like sawing motion. Yeah. So like one of us can flip, the other can flip. I think we get it in the middle and tie it off to the four center posts, one on either side. Yeah. With the plastic now untangled and nicely laid out over the building, with a few ropes to help it stay down when the wind blew, we now took some battens, rolled up the ends, and screwed it into the building. We started on one side and then pulled it tight on the other. Finally, the building is done. Or so we thought. So last week the building inspector stopped by and wanted to know what we were building. We said a boat, and he said this doesn't really look like a boat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, comes to find out, we are too close to the road. So the town owns the road, and then there's a 40 foot setback from the town property into your property, where you're not allowed to build a structure without getting a variance, which is a bit of a project. So the end of the boathouse is within that margin. So that's not good. Um, the other issue is that to build any structure over 100 square feet, you need a building permit. And there's no real code for a semi-permanent, semi-temporary boat shed. Uh, apparently, a lot of big wooden sailboats don't get made in Western Mass, and this is a new problem for them. So if you're building a building that's much bigger than one or 200 square feet, you need a building permit. And this is 1,200, so we're uh, definitely over that. So after a little back and forth with the building inspector, uh, what we came up with is that we need to get out of that 40-foot setback that the town has and We need to get some form of plans put together on a He'll issue a building permit which we'll have to pay for I'm not sure how much that is yet and then the building will be inspected and permitted and Can stay up more or less indefinitely at that point, which is good and if we want to beef it up or enclose it we can do that without having to go back to the building inspector and so it'll in the long run it should make life somewhat easier um, but it does involve taking down the tarp taking down the walls and relocating them so we're going to do some measurements today and send that off to a friend who's going to put it into CAD and do a site map and 
We'll go back to the building inspector later this week or next week, and if he okays those plans and issues us a permit, then we'll take down the boat shed and move it. We're hoping just to take it where it's perpendicular to the road and spin it 90 degrees and put it parallel to the road. So hopefully we can do that and that'll all work and it'll only set us back a couple weeks, which kind of stinks, but it's not the end of the world. Now that we had to take the building down, we were forced to start with one of the parts that gave us the hardest time, the roof. Such is the name of the game. It's kind of sad, but we're on our way to the move. And now for the walls. We took all the bracings off, and then we unhooked all the corners. And took the whole building down piece by piece. Sides ready to drop. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do some repair work. Down. Yep. In the next episode, we get to put it all right back up. Look, Ma! No hands! <laughs>